Welcome to Creeping It Real. I am Judah. Let's talk about Aliens Romulus. I will be giving a short review with no spoilers. Then I will go into spoilers where I will touch on some of the things that frustrated me about the movie. I will give you a warning when I start so that you can uh, opt out if you want. Let's get this trailer going in the background just so those of you who may have not seen the trailer can get a little idea here. So Aliens is one of my top franchises. If somebody used to ask me what my favorite horror movies were, and I know there's argument that Aliens, the second Alien movie, is not a horror movie, it's action. Duh. Okay, fine. If that's how you feel, that's fine. It is, it is, but it, it is still horror. It's a sci-fi horror action movie. And so Aliens, for me, is one of my top horror movies. I love monsters. And the alien design is just almost perfection. The alien and uh, the predator designs are just so amazing to me. So let's get into my thoughts. I actually enjoyed this movie. I went in with no hope whatsoever. After Alien Covenant, I, I just pretty much had given up on the franchise. Now, I'm not saying this movie is amazing. I'm not saying it's the greatest thing ever. I'm not saying that it matches Alien and Aliens. But I am saying that it's not garbage. If I'm going to give it a score, you know, 1 to 10, I'm looking at somewhere like a 6.5 or 7. That's where I'm going. And I do believe that seeing this at the cinema would be beneficial to you. Seeing this in a huge screen is definitely going to be far better than on your home screen. I did not think I wasted my money and I didn't think I wasted my time. Now granted, my boss paid for the ticket so obviously I didn't waste my money. But I still didn't feel like I wasted my time and that's a big issue. And it didn't make me walk away with a, uh, they're destroying the franchise. Star Wars has been destroyed. I, I, I don't even care about that anymore. I have no hopes for it. They've destroyed it so far and, and so beyond any kind of saving that I, I don't care about it anymore. Aliens is just kind of in the balance still. I've almost kind of accepted it as uh, some are good, some are bad. My personal rating for the Alien movies would go Aliens, that would be Alien 2, Alien, Prometheus. And now I know a lot of people out there give hate to Prometheus, but I really enjoyed Prometheus. That doesn't mean I wasn't bummed about the lack of xenomorphs in it. And, and there were definitely things that I wanted more from it. I would say from my initial initial viewing Prometheus, I was kind of bummed. But now as things have gone on and I've watched it several times, I, I really enjoy that movie. From there, we would go to Aliens Romulus. Then probably Alien Resurrection, Alien 3, and Alien Covenant. That piece of garbage. This might turn from a review of Alien Romulus into just me venting about Alien Covenant. So uh, Romulus, it's, I, again, I don't want to give any spoilers in this portion. You, you got your, you know, your typical female lead for the, the Alien movie. The, uh, it, it's pretty stereotypical as far as an alien movie goes. 
there's nothing new there. It's very formulaic as far as that goes. They used practical effects for the Xenomorphs, which is amazing. Uh, what, and as amazing as that is, they also used some CG, and this CG was hideous. Now, I don't know when it comes to the spaceships if they used miniatures or CG. And if they use CG for the spaceships, wow, amazing. But they used CG for something else, and it was so, so bad. I mean, if there is, there's definitely things I want to bring up that I was frustrated about, but the lowest point for this movie was CG for a particular thing. And with that, let me just say, I enjoy this movie. Six and a half or seven is what I would give it. And I don't think you're wasting your money to go see it in the cinema. I definitely think it would be helpful to see it on the big screen. There you go. That's it. I think it does the franchise good. It, it, it's a mid within the franchise, but it's not dog crap. There you go. Spoilers. I'm getting into the spoilers now. I'm getting into the things that frustrated me. Uh, I'm going to talk about very specific things right now. Now, this did not so much frustrate me. I just thought it was really silly. So we have these people that are on this planet and they want to get out. They're, they're tired of it. They want a, a, a new life. They want to go to this other planet, but it's like a, a nine year uh, travel time and they don't have any of the hibernation chambers. I don't know what they call them. I can't remember what they call them in the actual movie. So they have a plan that orbiting is an old Whalen spaceship is what they say that has some hibernation gear in it. And so their plan is to go and steal these because it's a decommissioned ship. They're going to steal them. And they're going to use them for themselves so they can get out of this deadbeat planet to a new planet, a planet that actually you can see the sun. So that's the plan. And uh, there's an android, and they need the android's help because apparently uh, because it's a, a Whalen android he can gain access to this ship you know that was kind of somewhat of a convenience but i'll let it pass so they go to this spaceship but then it turns out that it's not just a spaceship it's a full-on space station then they throw in some like random thing that you didn't know about oh, oh no it, it it's about to cream into the uh the rings of this planet we're at and we only have like so many minutes that we can go in there and get this. So we better hurry up. So they dock with this space station. And here's my, here's the very first thing that annoyed me. I said, I was going to talk about something that didn't annoy me, but I'm, I'm bypassing. They go in, there's, there's no gravity. They're crawling through these, like, I don't know, this duct work or something that literally made no sense. It's like for, they go to an actual docking station, but then they're crawling through the space that's literally just the, you know, big enough for people to crawl through barely. And I was like, what? How did, how did they dock at an entry port and suddenly they're crawling through this little, that made no space, zero gravity. But then uh, something that they call gravity purging, you know, the, the station has to gravity purge every so often. It was the dumbest mechanic I have ever heard of. Is this, is this like legitimate in any other movie? Gravity purge? It, it was dumb. Okay. That was the very first thing I thought was dumb. So the space station would gravity purge, which then that meant that the gravity would turn back on for a few moments. So they're crawling through, gravity turns back on, you know, they slowly lower into the little crawl space. And then they, you know, explain this whole gravity purging thing. They finally get out of the crawl space and they're in this huge building. 
I mean open area, my apologies, with very high open spaces. My first thought, my literal first thought when they get out of the space is I'm like, guys, you better, you better grab onto something. You better find something that is close to you that you can rest against because this gravity purge is going to happen and you've got a long way to drop and you're going to get hurt. First thought, these ding dongs, they go out there and no, it's not like, Hey, we should probably make sure we're safe. They're just all like, Oh, oh, look, oh, oh. And then of course the gravity purge comes Two of them, not by any kind of means of wisdom are in a places where they're not going to get hurt. But the third one obviously falls like 20, 30 feet. It's not, not detrimental, but he, he gets hurt a little bit, but I, that was the first thing I was like, okay, this, this ding dong, he's, he's dead. He obviously has n no thought capacity whatsoever about how to take care of himself. So that was my very first frustration as far as stupid characters. Now I'll, I'll jump back to the thing that I said bothered me, but wasn't necessarily stupid. So they find these hibernation pods and they eject them from the space station so that their spaceship can grab them. As the pods are coming out, the pods are shaped like the Wayland logo. And I didn't, when I saw that, I wasn't like, oh, that's cool. That's a fun little like nod. I, I just was like, that's ah, dumb. So when they get these uh, hibernation pods, they check them and they see that they don't have enough fuel to sustain them for nine years. It only has like enough fuel for three years. Again, this is a new mechanic that I think they've introduced into the alien universe. I, I, it somewhat makes sense that you need fuel to run these things for a certain amount of years. So they're all bummed and like, oh no, only three years, that won't make us there. And they're like, well, wait a minute, we have this, this little doodad that we're holding here that'll show us where there's more fuel. Which, you know, starts the whole mishap. They go looking for more fuel. They see that somewhere else located in the space station, there's more fuel for these uh, hibernation chambers. So they, that's where it goes. They go to hunt for that. Which leads me to another thing. They get this fuel for the hibernation ch chambers. This is where the... Um, a chain of events occurs. So they remove, remove the fuel. Little do they know that this fuel has been sub sustaining like somewhat hibernation chambers for the face huggers. And so when they remove it, the face huggers start waking up. So they're carrying this fuel around with them, but they also use it as like a freezing agent um, in different parts. Unless I'm mistaken, but I swear that the fuel was the same thing that they were using. They're just blasting this fuel off to like scare away face huggers and, and other things. So they're carrying this around and it's very evident that they're carrying this fuel around with them for a portion of the movie. But then as characters start dying off, the fuel kind of just disappears. Uh, it gets set down at one point and you never see anybody pick it up again at some point I'm saying to myself, Oh, okay. They ditched the fuel They're, You know, they're like thinking escaping the, these aliens is more important than trying to lug around this fuel. And I was like, that, that makes sense in the fact that if you're trying to get away from something faster, you want to get rid of things that are weighing you down, slowing you down. But lo and behold, magically, at the end of the movie, when they're back on their spaceship, somehow the fuel is there. Somehow it magically teleported from the space station to their spaceship. Even though none of the characters who actually made it to the space station, no, none of the characters that actually made it back to their ship was carrying the fuel. That frustrated me. At the beginning of the movie, when they go into the space station, uh, one of the crew members gets impregnated. An android is like, I have to stop this person who's been impregnated. I can't let them escape. 
So he's going after her to try to stop her, which obviously freaks her out. She gets away. She gets back to the spaceship. She's the pilot. And she's moving the ship away from the space station. But then at that exact moment, the chestburster starts coming out. You know, she's dying. She kicks some of the controls. The spaceship goes crazy. It goes creaming around. But it perfectly... This is what frustrates me because of the convenience of it. It perfectly is whipping around the side of the space station. It's hitting things. It's causing explosions. But somehow, miraculously, it crash lands safely into an open docking area on the space station. The convenience of that was so spectacularly silly. And somehow, only the space station sustained damage during this. Not the spaceship. The spaceship was completely fine and able to fly out at the end of the movie when they needed to escape. It just frustrated me. And yes, I said I liked this movie, but there's a lot of things in it that I thought were dumb. Which, speaking of the chestburster... This is something that always frustrated me with all of the movies is the gestation period for the chest bursters seems to change. There is no consistency with how long it takes a chest burster to be in a person. And I hope I don't have to say chest burster again. It's, it's very difficult for me for some reason. In some movies, it's days before this thing come out. But for some reason in this movie, it's literally like 10 minutes. Where's the consistency? It's all about, well, let's just change the gestation period based on what we need to happen. Okay. So I talked about the CG being crap. Okay. So I really think that they were trying to make this some kind of big reveal just in the way they presented it. (sighs) They're on the space station. They see this old destroyed, you know, Android on the ground. You you don't see it at all. Its face, it's just half melted. And later on, it becomes integral to the the story. They need information. And this chick is like, oh, I think that I can get this old Android to work. She sets it up and they keep it in the shadows and everything. And you can tell they're just trying to be, you know, stupid, like, Oh, this is a big surprise. Everybody's going to love this. This is amazing. And of course, when they finally show it in the light, it's the android from Alien, the one that goes crazy and tries to kill everybody. And it, 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 it to me, I wasn't like, oh, cool, look. I, I was just like, ah, member berries, member berries. Remember this? Remember this from the first movie? Now, I know, I know there's an argument against me that'd be like, Dude, that that was the time period. That was the you know model of droid there. I'm Android. They were using at that time, so it makes sense for that Android to be there. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I I I get it, but it's still the way they revealed it and everything. It it didn't seem like they were just trying to uh, be consistent within the time frame. It really felt like they were just trying to be like, oh, look, remember it? Oh, it annoyed me so much. And the CG was so bad. Oh my gosh. If anybody leaves a comment saying that this CG was good, you're full of poop. This CG was horrible. It was as bad, if not worse, than Rogue One when they tried to put Grand Moff Tarkin in there. It it was hideous. It was so, so hideous. The only times that it worked is when they showed him on a black and white monitor. At those points, it looked like believable. But whenever they showed him in, you know, quote unquote, real life or on a color monitor, ugh, it was bad, bad, bad news. And let's, let's talk about horror in general. For me personally, I've mentioned that I do not like slasher films. Just don't like them don't care. I love monster movies, but there's a fine line for me. I don't, I'm not a big fan of body horror 
but I do enjoy the thing. But body horror in general just doesn't do it for me. Now, in Aliens Resurrection, I felt that they had heavy body horror stuff in there. You, they show all these like failed attempts to uh, clone Ridley. You know, they were all grotesque and stuff, very body horror-esque. It, that turned me off. And then at the end, when the, the queen gave birth to the human alien uh, cross, I, I don't even know if you call it hybrid because they weren't bred. They were just the DNA, you know, got meshed up when they were trying to, to clone, gave birth to that that thing. That also uh, was very body horror-esque. In my opinion, for lack of a better way to describe it, it just seems somewhat lazy to me. Like, oh, let's make horror. Oh, you know what's scary is let's just mush things together. That let's make things just look gross. It, it yeah, it just comes off as lazy to me. Whereas when you look at the design of uh, the xenomorphs, it's just it's like it's its own creature. It's a beautiful terrifying monster that is its own thing. It's not just some mushed up things that look gross. And because it's gross, you're scared of it. You're scared of the alien because it's terrifying and it's beautiful. Alien Romulus to me felt like uh, a mix of aliens, the second alien resurrection and Prometheus. And a little bit of alien. I mean, because the, the design is so similar to alien, there were so many things within the design of the spaceships and the space station that really called back to the original. And good on them for that consistency. Very nice. But there wasn't a whole lot of that... Um, terror from the first one where it's just one-on-one -on -one hide and go seek kind of thing this was more of the aliens where it's just like there's a bunch of aliens and you have to escape you just you have to survive and the alien resurrection part is because there is body horror um there is birthing of crossbreed type stuff going on here and that, even though that part is very alien resurrection, the thing that is given birth has very much a tie-in to Prometheus. You'll just have to watch it yourself and get that. And I, I, I wasn't into it. It, it to me, it was it was just lazy, stupid. You, it's gross. Don't touch me. And again, I mentioned that. They're very formulaic, these movies. But this ending, which is very typical for the other movies, you know, let's blow an alien out the air duck. You know, all of them are all, all of, oh my God. Okay, alien, they blow it out the air duck. Aliens, there's a big fight scene and they blow it out the airlock. Alien resurrection, once again, vacuum of space. Then in this one, vacuum of space also is a way that it Skype. So there you go. Those are all the things I hated about this movie. And yet I would still say it was the fourth best Aliens movie. And I think that seeing it on the big screen would be advantageous to you. So if you have seen it, please leave your comments. Let me know your thoughts. If you thought I was full of baloney and was picking on it way too much, let me know. Do you think this franchise has more life in it? Give me your thoughts. Oh, I forgot to tell you one more thing. We got the uh, we got the the popcorn bucket. See, that's got that's where you reach in for the popcorn. Yeah, but we got the uh, the collector popcorn bucket. It's an alien head. I think it's pretty cool. I don't know how much my boss paid for it, but and since when has this become like a a thing? It seems, it, in my opinion, I did not become aware of these collectible uh, popcorn buckets uh, until the uh, famous Dune worm, sandworm popcorn bucket came out. And then, then suddenly it seems like it's been a big thing.
Anyway, give me your thoughts on the popcorn buckets. Are collectible popcorn buckets stupid? Or do you secretly want them? Thanks for watching. I'm Judah. This has been Creeping It Real. Catch you later.